Hey guys, it's David with Cars and Code. In this video series, we're going to be creating a chess AI that we can play against. Uh, it's it's going to be a pretty good chess AI using the Minimax algorithm. Uh, if you play against it, it's, it's likely to beat you unless you're a pretty good chess player. I know it can beat me pretty well. Um, so, this first video is going to be more about the actual UI setup of the application, which is going to be written in Xamarin Forms. Um, so if you're not really interested in seeing how we actually create the chessboard and pieces and how we move them around on the board and that sort of stuff, go ahead and skip this video. Um, but without further ado, let's jump in here. So we've got a uh, just standard Xamarin Forms application that was just created called Chess AI, and we've removed the Windows Phone application from it. Um, so we're just going to jump in here to the main page and we're going to create a 2x2 two two chessboard. Right? So eventually it's going to obviously have to be an 8x8 eight eight chessboard, but just to make things a little easier as we're actually creating uh, this board, we're going to make it a 2x2 a two two board. And we're going to do that by using a grid um, object in, in Xamarin Forms, and it's just going to have two rows and two columns. So I'm going to create that right now. Now that we have the actual grid created, let's create each tile. Now we're going to have a red and white board. Uh, so we're going to have four images, one in each section of the grid. And the top two are going to be white then red, and then the bottom row is going to be red then white. Okay, now that we've created the board, we can actually just run this and see what it looks like. So here we can see we have our 2x2 two two chessboard. So let's move on and actually be able to add the pieces to this chessboard. So we're going to have to add these images I have here um, that I've downloaded free chess images from the internet uh, to the application. So we're going to start with Android, so we're going to come to our resources, drawable xxhdp folder, and we're going to paste all of these in here. Now that we've got those actually in there, let's actually be able to add them to our board. So we could just try and test this out and say, hey, source equals uh, the black bishop and run it. And we can see we have our black bishop in this square. But we don't actually just want to hard code these pieces in here. We want to actually be binding to a view model and where our view model has a model of the board. Um, and then our view is just going to mimic whatever is in our view model. So let's create a main view model uh, that's going to inherit from a base view model. For our base view model, we're just going to paste in a pretty standard base view model here. Now our main view model is going to inherit from base view model, as you might accept, expect. And we're going to need the board to be on here, right? So we're going to need a, a instance of the board. So in order to do that, we're going to have a list of a list of a new object that we're going to create called a tile. So a tile is going to be a representation of a certain section on the board. So let's first create our tile class. Now our tile is also going to be a base view model. So our tile is going to need a few different things. First, it's going to need a X and Y position uh, that corresponds to the position it is on the board. So let's create two properties for that. And then it's also going to need the piece that is present on that tile. So a piece could be nothing, or it could be a king or a queen of a different color. So we're going to have a, another class for a piece, and this tile class is going to have a reference to a piece on it. So let's create that. Now notice I put piece in a different folder called models. Now we're actually, our piece is going to be a struct. And the reason for this is that we need our piece to be very quick to do arithmetic with. Uh, because the, the computer, the AI, is going to be using this struct a lot. Uh, to passing it around and doing math on it to figure out what move to make. So that's why this is going to be a model instead of a view model and it's just going to be a struct. Now a piece is also going to need an X and Y location for that piece. And the reason for that is that we're going to be using uh, a list of pieces 
for the first player and a list of pieces for the second player. And we'll get a little bit more into that later, but we're also going to need um, our pieces to have an X and Y on them. So let's add those. Now our piece is also going to need um, to know what kind of piece it is. If it's a king, if it's a queen, or a pawn, or a bishop, or whatever. So we're going to add a character that's just going to be a certain letter that corresponds to the piece. So if it's a, a king, we might have a K. If it's a queen, we'll have a Q. If it's a knight, we'll have an N. A uh, pawn would be a P, and so on. And the last thing we're going to need to know for a piece is which player it belongs to. Is it a white piece or is it a black piece? So we're going to add a new uh, boolean called isPlayer1. And the last thing we're going to need is a constructor. So when we create this object, we can assign all of the values. So now that we've finished our piece struct, let's come back over to our tile and we can add a property on a tile for the piece that is on that tile. Okay, so now we have our tile class and our piece class created. So we can come back to our main view model now. And in our main view model, let's create the board object, which, as we said before, is going to be a list of a list of tile. Now, as I said before as well, we're going to need a list of piece for player one and a list of piece for player two. Now, I know we could just use this list of list of tile um, and just use the pieces that are present on this object. Uh, but passing around this huge object of 64 tiles is going to be slow for the computer to actually do its, its calculations. So we're just going to use a list of piece for player 1 and a list of piece of, for player 2 that we're going to actually be doing the calculations with. Once we've finished the calculations on those lists, then we're going to transfer it over to the board, and the board is what the UI is actually going to be looking at. So we're going to kind of have two different models in here. Um, and there's probably a better way to do this, but I thought this would be a very simple way to do it uh, that shows what's going on very well. Now in our constructor, we're going to have to create our board, uh, instantiate our board and our player1 and player2 objects. And then we're going to have to fill in our board with new tiles. So real quick, just to go through this for loop I wrote, we're going to loop from i 0 to 2 and j 0 to 2, or I guess 0 to 1. Um, and we're, for each i, for each row in the board, we're going to add a new list that's horizontally for uh, in that row. And for every element in that row, which is 2 across, we're going to add a new tile. And on that tile, we're going to set the x and y coordinates to be the location of that tile. And then we're going to add that tile to that row. So once this is done, let's actually create our uh, pieces that are going to be on the board. So let's create two black pawns at the top of the board and two white pawns on the bottom of the board. Now player one is going to be the white player and they're going to be on the bottom of the board. So the bottom of the board is going to be at y equals one and the black pieces at the top of the board are going to be at y equals zero. And they're both going to have one piece at x equals zero and one piece at x equals one. And now once we've created the pieces, let's transfer the pieces from these two lists of pieces over onto the board so it can display them. And to do that, we're going to call this method called redrawBoard. On redrawBoard, we're going to set the piece of that uh, every tile on the board to the piece um, that could be on that square. So the first thing let's do, let's just uh, empty out all of the tiles on the board. So every single tile on the board has no piece on it.
And once we've done that, let's just loop through all the pieces that player 1 has and put them on the board, and then all the pieces that player 2 has and put them on the board. Okay, and once we have done that, then our board should be all the way updated. We should have two pawns on top, uh, two black pawns on top, and two white pawns on the bottom. So now all we have to do is hook up the binding in our main page so that our first image binds to the zero column and zero row in our actual board object in our view model. So in order to do that, we're going to have to use a binding converter. So we're going to bind our object to the board, and then we're going to use a converter to pass the row and column of that tile to the converter. The converter then will take this board object along with the row integer and column integer and use those to return the correct tile to this main page. Ideally, I would like to do something um, like this. Uh, if we could do something like binding to board 0, 0, that would be awesome, but I can't really figure out how to do this. I've tried a few different ways, but can't really figure it out. If anyone knows how to do it like this, shoot me a, a message or leave it in the comments below um, so I can uh, figure out how to do that. That would be awesome. But because we can't do this, we're going to have to be using that converter I was talking about. Let's call it the board to tile converter. Okay, so now we just have to pass in some arguments and use this converter in our XAML. So first let's add it to our XAML as a resource. Now here's where we're going to have to actually reference it. So we're going to have to add a using here in our XAML. And we can give it a key and we'll just call it a board to tile converter. And then down here, in our, we can instead of sending to our board 0, 0, we're going to have to use our converter. So we'll still be binding to board, but after that we're going to have to use our converter. And then we're going to have to add a, our converter parameter, and this is just going to be a string that we can pass through the, to the converter so it can uh, figure out which row and column. So we're going to do the row period the column. Uh, and in our converter, we'll just parse this string on the period. That way we have our row and a column here. So we can copy and paste this whole thing for the next three tiles as well. This will be 0 0.1, this will be 1.0, and this last one will be 1.1. Now here's where we're actually going to have to do that parsing and grab the tile from our board object. So first, our value that's coming in is going to be our board. Next parameter is going to be that string that's coming in, so let's grab that as well. Next, let's split our string into the two row and column in integers. And finally, we can grab the correct tile from the board. And finally, we return that tile. So now this converter should take our board, take the input string parameter, split it on the period, and then grab our board object for the correct row and column on our board. And it assigns that object to be the binding context of our image. So then the last thing we will need to do is actually take uh, the source of our image here and assign it to our tiles label object. But notice our label, if you remember in our actual piece, we have this label that is what the piece is, is either a P or a, a queen is a Q or king is a K, etc. We're going to have to create a converter that takes the piece on the tile and converts it into the correct image. So let's create a new converter, and we're going to call it the piece to image converter. So 
So now the value that's going to be coming into our converter is going to be this piece object, this piece truck that we're looking at. Um, so based on that piece, we're going to have to figure out um, what we want to show, which image we want to show. So first let's verify that our piece is actually a piece. If it's not a piece, we're just going to return string.empty. Then it won't show any image there. So the next thing we're going to do is check if it's a player 1 or a player 2 that owns this piece. If it's player 1, we need a white piece. If it's player 2, we need a black piece. So in here, we're just going to check the label on the piece and return the corresponding image for that label. And for player two, we're just gonna have to do the same thing, but replace white with black. Okay, and the last thing we should have to do is in our main page.xaml, we have to use this converter to bind the source of our image. So we're binding to our piece. Uh, remember our piece is on our tile object, that's our binding context, and then we're going to use our converter to convert that piece to the correct image. And I forgot we have to add it here as a resource. And then we just need to add these to this to the rest of the tiles. And finally, we can just assign the binding context of our main page to the main view model. And once we've done this, we should be able to run it and see our two black pawns on top and two white pawns on bottom. So there we go. We can see our two black pawns on top and two white pawns on bottom. So that's going to be the end of this video. In the next video, we're going to talk about actually how to move these pieces around. Um, and then the video after that will actually start getting into the actual AI. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you all have a great day and I will see you next time.